in his holy temple. Yes. Yeah. That all the earth keeps silent before him. Yes. Yeah. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all kings. Yeah. And we're just so thankful that he's shown his grace upon us this morning. Yeah. And allowed us to come out once again to the house of prayer. Yeah. But he never forgets about us. And he never leaves us. And it's just such a wonderful day to be standing here knowing that the God of creation is looking down on little old me and all of you. And we're just so happy to have you this morning at Town of Old Missionary Baptist Church. And we invite you to worship with us this morning the Most High God. At this moment, we're going to ask Reverend Little if he'll let the Spirit lead him and give us a congregational song. If you have your hymn book, please turn to page two, I um, mean page 24, praise him. Again, page 24, praise him. Be merciful to me. 
heal my soul. For I have sinned against you. My enemies speak evil of me. When will he die and his name perish? And if he comes to see me, he speaks lies. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goes out, he tells it. All who hate me whisper together against me. Against me they devise my hurt. An evil disease, they say, cling to him. And now that he lies down, he will rise up no more. Even my own familiarity friend, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, had mm -hmm. lifted up his heel right. against me. Uh -huh. yeah, but you, yeah, O oh Lord, Lord. Yeah. be merciful to me, yeah. and raise me up, that I may repay them. Yes. By this I know that you are well pleased with me.
time with y'all. I got to participate in this worship service. So I give it back to God. Part of what you get to bless us with. And you know when he blesses you, he didn't bless you to put it in your pocket and keep it. He blesses you so you may bless someone else. And through your giving, someone else is blessed. And that blessing is passed along to someone else. You know, God has a, a great outreach. He touches me, he touches you, so you may touch somebody else. And you may touch somebody else, and it just keeps multiplying. Just thank God for all of you being here this morning and sharing in this bountiful blessing that God has so richly given us. Because He didn't have to give us anything this morning. But in His mercy and grace, He woke us up. And not only did He wake us up, He got us up. And he is a merciful and mighty God. He just continues to bless us and grant us His grace. And we didn't even have to ask for it. He is just that kind of God. Let us pray now. Grace Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We ask your blessing upon this offering this morning. Blessing only you can. Bless the one that gave, bless the one that had not. We just thank you, dear Master, for all you have done. We thank you, Lord, for what you will do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And now the next thing that you will hear will be a hymn of preparation. That song that leads us into worship. Amen. You know, David danced and All right. played the harp. All right. And there are many others that did their number of singing and praising All right. Amen. before they shared the word of God. And this is the way we do it here at Channel Grove. Brother Lil, if you would lead us
He's in grace, y'all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Nobody but God. Amen. Amen. Praise. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask you right now if you would turn with me in your Bibles to the gospel as recorded by Matthew Levi, a tax collector who gave up his tax business to follow Jesus. He gave up millions to follow Jesus. Amen. When you find where you say amen. Matthew chapter 5 mm -hmm. verses 14 through 16 Amen. 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 And hear the word of God what Jesus spoke while he was up on his mountain in the region. He said, you are the light of the world. A city is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is the word of God to the people of God. Let us pray. Father, now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this light of this day when you woke us up this morning, Father. We thank you that in the book of Genesis, the book of beginning, when you said, let there be light after you created the world, the hells and earth, Father. We thank you right now, Lord, for the light that shone early on a Sunday morning when Jesus got up with all power in his hand. Lord, we thank you for that light. We thank you for that light that when we're going through a dark time, Lord, that you show up and shine your light and show us that there is a way out of no way, Father. Bless us right now, Father. Let all here hear your word, Father, because your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Bless us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated, saints of God. Now, before we get started, I'm going to do a little housekeeping here so that when we get and y'all like to flow right on through. I don't want to stop in the middle for anything else. But uh, we want to inform you that on uh, February 9th, there will be an administrative meeting. And on February 16th, there will be a church meeting here at China Grove. I want to just inform you of that. Amen. And I want to also ask you, ask prayer for Brother Eddie Jones at the passing of his wife, Sister Bernstein. And man, she was feminized and celebrated here this past week. So let's just keep those things in mind, amen. So let us get started here. Uh, today, we are listening to Jesus, as in the words say that when he was set, he opened his mouth and he began speaking to his disciples. He went up on a mountain and his disciples waiting on him what he was going to say. Back during that time, the student would sit in a semicircle and the rabbi or the teacher would come and sit. They didn't stand behind and put him like we do now, but they would sit and then they would open their mouth and they would teach. This is what Jesus did. And Jesus started off in this fifth chapter of Matthew with what we call the Beatitudes. I say that's the right attitude of how we love God and treat each other. Having the right attitude, be in the right attitude, be in the right frame of mind, because many times we're not in the right frame of mind. So he had to be attitudes, now just go over a few. And if I'm not mistaken, there were 10 of them when they said, Blessed. It said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So we see that every time he said, bless. So you are blessed when you become a peacemaker. He said, you are even blessed when you are persecuted for doing the right thing. A lot of times we get in trouble for doing the right thing. So that's a blessing. As long as we stand up for Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. So he comes down now. Another part of this chapter, see in verse 13, he said, you are the salt of the earth. So he's saying that you are special yeah. when you are salt. See, salt makes a difference in everything. Have you ever tried cooking collard greens without salt? Don't be seasoning. <laughs> it's got to have some salt. Now, you can use paprika and everything else. You can use dash. But ain't nothing like salt. All of your rich blood pressure going up, you're going to put that salt on there anyhow and say you're going to be all right. You've got to have that salt. When you cook your egg, the egg will taste right unless you got some salt on your egg. You've got to have some salt. Back during the day, you know, when you had a wound, mom didn't have no alcohol, they put salt in the wound. And it will clean that wound out. See, salt is a purifier. Salt is, is probably the most effective cleanser there is, that salt is. So, but light erases darkness. When God said, let there be light, God had created a wonderful thing for us, but we could not see it without light. So then he spoke the word, he said, let there be light. And scripture said, and there was light. And we got light right now, shining through the windows. I remember a little girl, her mama, asked her, you know, they had some stained glass on the like out. They had a picture of the white Jesus on the windows. And the mom said, baby, why is that light shining through the window? She said, so I can see Jesus better. So without light, we can't see Jesus. Without light of salvation, we cannot see Jesus. So I want you to go with me today as we go to Capernaum, our Cape and I on, as we listen to Jesus speaking through the lens of his own gospel as recorded and penned in the gospel of Matthew. Matthew was also known as Levi. Levi, when Jesus came by, was up on his stand collecting taxes. People came into the city. Everybody had to pay their taxes. And so as Jesus was looking at Levi, and see, tax collectors was not loved by most people. You know, now, we're not crazy about the IRS. Amen. Because that's, you know, the IRS is our boogeyman this time of year. Amen. So, but anyway, Jesus... Uh, told Levi, as he watched Levi taking the taxi, he looked at him and said, he called him back, he said, Levi, follow me. And Levi got up and left everything and followed Jesus. How many of you would be willing to leave millions of dollars to follow Jesus? How many of you would be willing to leave your big house to follow Jesus? But Levi left everything. He left millions on the table to follow Jesus. There's no better person to follow and then Matthew 5, 14 tells us that you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. So what happened in olden times, people had candles and they had lamp lights. So a man ran around town and when it started getting dark, said, turn on your lights. And when they turned the lights on, they turned, lit the lamps and lit the candles. But miles away you could see the light of that city sitting on the hill. And we got our lights on, people can see us clearly as we really are. So let your light shine before men. We, you and I, are called redeemers, saved to be light reflectors of Jesus. So when we speak, people can tell what's in us. Because we are to reflect the light. Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. But then he flipped the scripture and said, now you are the light of the world. See why Jesus is gone, we got to shine the light for Jesus. How we love our neighbor shows the intensity of our life. How we treat our treat those who don't look like us shows how we you know shows how our light is shining. Without anything, we can without doing anything, we got to have light. When you have surgery, surgeons gonna what shine bright light. If they don't have the light, they'll make the wrong cut. They might amputate the wrong leg if they don't have light. You don't want that to happen. Amen. So in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus come around and said, now you are the light shining glow of the world. So we don't need to shine our light in here. It's plenty of light in here. The light bill's been paid. Our light needs to be shining outside of these doors. That's where the light needs to shine. Our light needs to shine the alleyways, the highways, and byways. That's where the light needs to be shining. So he said, let your light so shine. Amen. So you know, stars show up at night. They burn bright all the time. However, we can't see them at night when darkness is around. Christians are to be visible light at all times to those living in total darkness. In order to get us a chance, God allows circumstance and trial. Just like, you know, you might come up with stage four cancer and then God heals you. 
then your light shines because you got a testimony. Somebody else going through, but you, the light you shine, tell them, hey, you're going to make it anyway. Just keep on praying. See, God allowed, God allowed you to get that eviction notice that you know what it's like to be homeless. And then you tell somebody how it feels not to have no roof over your head. Or you might wake up one morning and see your car going down the street hooked on back to the repo man's record. And see, this is a light for you. You can let your light shine by telling somebody how it feels to have to get a J train ticket to get, you know, to get to work and get back home. So let your light shine before men. Today, as God's Holy Spirit allows, let us, you and I, engage this thought. Let your light shine. Don't hold on to your light. Just let it shine. Just let it go. Let your light shine in the darkness. Amen. Shine your lights to the world. The world needs your light because there's a lot of things going on in the world that needs light. Yes. Because the Bible said men love darkness rather than lack light. You know, back in the 60s, they had a song saying, in the booth, in the back, in the dark. So is that where dirt goes on, in the, in, in the dark? They said men rather have darkness rather than light. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Old church hymn says, shine on me. Shine on let the, let the little lighthouse shine on me. We got to have the light of God shine inside of us. Because scripture said he is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path, showing you how to go and where not to go. You need that light of Almighty God. We'll, that has something death in the house. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And notice some writer of this song, some of Jesus' words and commands, this does it. Jesus' delight to shine to me, shine to me. He will show up in me. If I talk the way he wants me to talk, he'll show up in me. If I walk the way he wants me to walk, he will show up in me. But we got to do what God says if his light's going to shine in us. we got to have the right connection for our light to shine. If you don't have a good connection, your light can't not shine. you got to have the right You can't have a loose connection and your light's going to shine. Amen. Without Jesus' light, there is no light to shine. There's only darkness. Darkness can't shine. Darkness goes away when your light shines. Yeah. In other words, you can be in a, a total dark room and you strike a match. And that little bit of match, all it does is take a little bit of light. Just take a little bit of Jesus to get rid of the dark stuff in your life. You strike that match and the entire room can see that light. Amen. Are you in the house today? Amen. Amen. Let your light shine. Jesus shone his light of grace. Levi left everything. He left his unsavory lifestyle, but he got up and he followed Jesus. Matthew 5, 14 said, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. And Jesus Christ said, While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. He was saying that while I'm here, look at my light. He said, But when I'm gone, you need to show your light. So we have responsibility for it to shine our light. So we are to replace what Jesus was doing. Amen. So here we go here. Today is God's most real life. Let us just say, let your light shine. Don't hold back. Light comes at a very high price. When the last time you notice your light here? Every month it gets higher and higher. It costs a whole lot of money. That's why I said, boy, turn up the lights off. <laughs> turn that TV off. Don't let that TV keep going because you know lights cost. It costs money for light. Amen. Without Jesus in your life, there is really no light. We got to have Jesus, my brother. So we got to have Jesus in our life. We got to have that light. That's the only light that works in our life. And then John. The Apostle John said this. He said, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. See, evil folks don't want the light shine on them. Evil folks don't want you to talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. They want you to keep quiet about Jesus Amen. to make them feel, to let them not to feel good about the darkness they're living in. So let your light shine, not to condemn people, not to convict people, but let them see the light of Jesus, showing them that well, there's a better way of living and being in the world. See, somebody had to show me the light. My mother-in-law had to show me the light in Clinton, Mississippi. And she showed me the light. I began to see how those sisters would happen. They didn't have much, but they loved Jesus, and they had the light. And so one day, as I told you before, being redundant, 
I ended up in front of the preacher and didn't know how I got there. Because it was the light that got me there. The light of Jesus. Now remember when you had roaches in your house, you don't have them now. When you had, you used to have roaches. And you got up at night, you were going to go in and get you a drink of water. You turned the lights on, you saw roaches running for the cabinets. Saw so running back into your cupboard because they didn't like the light. They didn't want you to see them in your grits. They didn't want you to see them in, the, in your rice. They didn't, see, they didn't want you to see them in their stuff. So they hid because they knew if you saw them, you were going to crush them. You know about them roaches. And then they'd embarrass you sometimes. The neighbors saying they'd hide and they fly across the room <laughs> to get you for last night for showing them up. You remember that? I do remember that. And therefore, you know, they had band and everything. Nothing worked on the roaches. They just kept on living anyway. Sin is that way. Sin is still around. Sin is not going anywhere. So we still need Jesus. And then Genesis 1 and 4 said, And God saw the light that it was good. Light prevents us from stumbling and getting tripped up on sins in the world. I think a man told a story about, and it happened to me also, when my wife rearranged the furniture in the house when she cleans up all the time. And so I got up at night, going, I was going to cut around through the living room. And I walked through there, and I, I, I realized she had put the coffee table in another place. And I was going around to, to get my water. And all of a sudden, I was on the floor. Because I was going to try to make with that light. I said, I know where I'm going, but I didn't have no light. And the coffee table put me on the floor. Had I turned the light on, my kneecap would have been out of place. But you got to have light. The greatest joy we can have is to shine our light in the world, showing sinners where and who Jesus is as the man we are being God with us. Good works with the light of Jesus Christ. Let your reflected light from Jesus shine so bright that mankind will see your good works. See, we got people got to see stuff in church folks. We are called to shine a light. We can't act like the church folks. I just act like church folks actually. They go to the club and I go to the club. And they do the hound dog and I do the hound dog. I was doing what they were doing, so I was not shy. I was out of church with the stand doc, because I was right there with them doing the stuff they were doing, you know. And then I had somebody make me a blood of Mary and all this kind of stuff. You know what blood of Mary is? That bark and that uh, and that uh, tomato juice. You know, this I did the same thing they were doing. Then I was going to church on Sunday saying, "Amen, praise the Lord." I was not but a hypocrite. My light was not shining. I was going where the light was. When I left church, I didn't have no light in me because I was doing what the sinner was doing. We got to be careful about that. Amen. Amen. Jesus shines light in order for us to avoid sin and to help the world avoid sin. Our light should be the brightest when we leave church. There's plenty of light in the church. We, we, should, be, we should light the world up. When we leave here, every neighborhood should be lit up with the light of Jesus in you. Amen. Amen. Shine the light on that trash that's piled up in your neighborhood. Shine your light on the busted pipes that's leaking the raw sewage in your streets. Shine your light on city leaders to fix these problems and, and not bickering amongst them. Let your walk with Jesus detour you away from the sin. Let your light shine. The Jesus inside will shine on the outside of us, showing the world the way out of the dark dungeon of sin. Showing the world how to live God's marvelous light. And the song says, shine on me. Shine on me. Let this light of the lighthouse shine on me. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come and rest, shine on me. The old gospel songs had a lot of powerful stuff in them, see. They would preach sermons, say, shine on me. See, people are begging for us to shine on them. People need this light that you got. We don't need to keep it to ourselves. See, a flashlight is no good unless you turn it on. So when you leave here, turn your lights on. Turn your lights on. See, I know uh, two, I got two friends sitting back there together. Sister Darlene and her line, see. Darlene was afraid I was going to call her and tell her that Pearl Lyon was coming to church more than she was and she showed up today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So that light shining and got Darlene here today. Amen. See, in other words, Ted Pendergrass had a song. He said, what? He said, he said, turn off the lights and light a candle. But I tell you, don't do that. 
You turn on the lights and let the candles stay out that you can see Jesus. Amen. You know, just a few hours ago, before we got up, if you went outside, you would see the cows huddled around the trees. And you would see birds with their heads tucked under their wings. And you would see squirrels still in their holes in the tree. But when the sun came out, what happened? The sun came out. The cows got up and started moving around and started moving. And then the little calves began to look for milk. And the birds began to sing songs from God's song book that he made just for the birds. One bird was started singing. And I know I'm living in the North. Birds started singing in a tree in my backyard. Then a tree over on, on, up on the Battle North Boulevard hit the sound. And that bird started singing. And then that bird hit the bird in Battle North. And then a bird on Wacken Drive began to sing. Then it, all of a sudden, with the entire neighborhood, got birds singing because what one bird decided to let his light shine. You got everybody. Here. That's how it works. We got to let our light shine. Somebody listen to you. Somebody watch you. Let your children see your light shine. How you live in your house, and let your light shine on them. Amen. So we're here today. Amen. Dogs began to bark because of God's new daylight. Let your light shine. Squirrel looking, looking for fresh acorns and for other food. They, uh, they let their light shine. Let your light shine. Shine your light to give God glory. When you shine your light, God gets the glory. Not you, but God gets the glory. Wherever you are right now in your Christian walk, let your light shine. God gets the glory when you turn your faith lamp up to let your little light shine. Shine your light on the absentee dads to being good fathers to sons and daughters to grow and shine their lights. Shine your light on the street gangs in Jackson, Mississippi to stop senseless killings for love to replace the killings in street violence. Shine your light on the far right racism in America. Shine your light in the state house. Amen. Shine your light in the White House. Shine your light all over this nation. Shine your light on police department that they will see that Men on the streets are human beings, amen, and not something to be crushed out and abused, amen. Shine your lights on the clan who traded hood for a bad gun and a bit of club. Lady at the well saw Jesus' light and she told her neighbor, come and see a man who told me everything about myself. See, she thought she was doing okay, and she would tell the Jesus about her, about her husband. He said, he said, one, you're not, God now is not married, you know, you, no, no, you're not married to him, and that convicted her. So when Jesus' light lit her up, she went home and said, come see a man that told me everything about myself because Jesus put her in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. We're not convicted for what. Let your light shine. We don't have to talk about people, what they're doing, but just show them the good way. Let, you, let, you, let them see the light in you about how good you're doing, about how good you're serving the Lord. Let them see your light. Amen. Zacchaeus, a little sharp man, I don't talk about short too much. <laughs> uh, Zacchaeus was up in a tree. And he up in a sycamore tree. And then he saw Jesus down the road coming. It was something about Jesus and the way he was talking. Zacchaeus was looking at Jesus and admired Jesus. And Jesus stopped at Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, he said, come down. And Zacchaeus came down, and they went to Jesus, and Jesus went to his house, and they had dinner together. Because Zacchaeus saw Jesus, Jesus spoke to him. James and John saw Jesus' light and left their father's Zebedee's fishing business to follow Jesus. Amen. What will you give up right now to follow Jesus? Will you give up your bank account? Will you give up your club membership? Amen. Will you give up your season ticket? A man for GSU to follow Jesus. Amen. Then there's a favorite song to say, Sister Adam, when I'll end every box of this song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine under the basket. No, I'm going to let it shine. Had it under the basket. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Had it under the basket. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Satan can't blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Racists can't blow it out, but I'm gonna let it shine. 
Plan can't blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Shine all over Jackson. I'm going to let it shine. Shine all over Jackson. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let your light shine, my brothers and sisters. we got a lot of work to do. If we all shine our lights. This will be a better country. This will be a better world. Shine your lights. Shine your lights. Somebody needs your light. Boys and girls are killing each other. Amen. Let your light shine. Show them there is a better way. Show them there is conflict resolution in the Bible. Because Jesus said when you got a problem, he said go to a brother one-on-one -on -one and talk to him. He said, now if he doesn't listen to them, what you go and get you two or three other folks and talk to them. The advice said, they don't listen, then you go care to the church. And see, too many of our young people are not coming to church, are not bringing them to church. But this little child right here, she came walking in this morning. Her, her grandma didn't have to carry her. She came, and she was glad to get here. Because she loved church. And children love Jesus. But we got to invite them to Jesus. Amen. And today, we invite you, somebody here today who don't know Jesus, we invite you right now. Let's grab a little tongue. You can really come as you are. The folks said when they catch the fish, they're dirty, but when they get them home, they clean them up. And Jesus will clean you up. Whatever you've been through, he'll clean you up. And nobody can clean you up better than Jesus. You may come as a new member. You may come as a son, but Jesus will fix your stuff. However you are, Jesus got the answer to your situation. Just come to Jesus right now while the blood is still running warm in your veins. Jesus wants you right now. He needs sinners like us because we've been there, we've done that. We know what sin is. We can tell people how God brought us and share our testimony to let our light shine. Yeah, Brother Bain. And Sister Desk, we thank God, Sister Desk. 
She said, where is she going to be here? And God brought her here. By the grace of God. Amen. We're going to ask Reverend Smith to come and give us a benediction.